Well, hey guys, get excited. It's my favorite topic today, and that is sunscreen. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing seven tinted mineral sunscreens that I've been trying out for you all. But one advantage of choosing a tinted sunscreen is that the tint often comes from the ingredients iron oxides. They're red, black, and yellow iron oxides. That's what gives the tint. We have come to learn that iron oxides in these tinted sunscreens may offer you some protection against the wavelengths of blue light that come from the sun that contribute quite a bit of oxidative stress to the skin. And for people with medium to deep skin tones are really important in driving early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation. So iron oxides, bottom line, whether they be in sunscreens or in your makeup, they can help possibly protect against those wavelengths. So for simplicity's sake, you guys know that all of these are gonna be tinted mineral sunscreens. So I'm not gonna keep reiterating that. And all of these sunscreens are free of fragrance. They would all be perfectly acceptable choices if you have very sensitive skin. Mineral sunscreens often are better tolerated. They differ kind of in their consistency and the appearance of the tint. So you will see them on my skin and what they look like up close. First of all is one from a brand that I love. I've tried this out before, but I've never shown it on camera, I don't think, is the Elta MD UV Restore Tinted Sunscreen. This is an SPF 40 sunscreen. It's not water resistant, but it is very moisturizing. I consider it a great option for a daily facial moisturizer with sunscreen and a nice tint to it. It would be a good base for your makeup. It's not greasy. Nor or is it shiny? I like that it's very easy to spread on the skin. Some mineral sunscreens, they can be a little bit tacky and difficult to get good even spread. This is this goes on quite well. It has squalane in it, which I always happen to find is a nice emollient for imparting a healthy dewy glow without looking greasy or shiny. Tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, that is a stable form of vitamin C. It may help in you know, minimizing oxidative stress. Those types of ingredients, however, However, they're mostly in there a lot of times for marketing, but that's there for whatever it's worth. And it also has something called saccharide isomerate, which my understanding is, is a moisturizing ingredient. This is vegan as well, so free of any animal derived ingredients. $41 for two ounces, so not cheap. I really think it's a great option if you are looking for a tinted sunscreen as a daily facial moisturizer. One more thing about the Elta sunscreen, it does not have niacinamide. I know a lot of you guys, you know, you don't get along with niacinamide, Cinnamide. So this is one that is free of niacinamide. All right, moving on. Number two is one that you guys have asked me actually to review. I've gotten some requests. It's uh, by Tatcha. It's their The Silk Sunscreen SPF 50. They even do a PA rating, which kind of you know suggests the UVA efficacy of this PA 3 plus. That's not something that is required of sunscreens here in the US. It's nice when they do it. It has its limitations, the PA rating. I did not buy this, they actually sent it to me. I was a bit surprised that it is not water resistant because the formulation has that kind of shiny grippiness that many water resistant formulas have. It has one of my favorite moisturizing ingredients, isododesane, dodecane in it. The selling ingredient is hydrolyzed silk. You know, that may help with moisturizing. It's not like necessarily the most evidence-based thing. It's in there for whatever that's worth. Now this one does have niacinamide in it. The tint on this, you guys, is very, very negligible. There's not much to it. And I was surprised by how sheer this is. If you have a deeper skin tone, I think this is gonna show up as like a very sheer white veil on the skin. It's not very deeply tinted. If you have a paler skin type and you want to use a tinted sunscreen, this would be one you might like. It does have niacinamide in it, which again, a lot of you guys have issue with. Otherwise, it's a great ingredient. I don't know, this is not one I would buy myself. Uh, is zinc oxide is the active ingredient. There's no titanium dioxide in this one. $60 for 1.7 ounces. It's not one I would necessarily buy myself or you know go out of my way to repurchase. It is kind of cool packaging that it's flat, easy to throw in your bag. I do like that for whatever it's worth, but I don't know. I was sort of 
so so on that one all right number three is another one that i got at the american academy of dermatology from a brand i really like it is uh tizo tizo uh stands for titanium and zinc oxide although this particular sunscreen i've got a mini mini one that i got here this particular sunscreen is zinc oxide as the active ingredient ingredient only a sunscreen with ceramides as well as tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate again that's the vitamin c derivative that may help with fighting off free radicals very very moisturizing not water resistant but in my opinion it looks and feels very similar to the md solar science spf 50 tinted mineral cream which is water resistant so i don't know in my opinion that one may be a better Better option because you're getting the water resistant factor there and for water resistance the reason I like it is it just holds up better if you're in sweaty conditions and of course I highly recommend it if you're going to be outside and it's hot and sweaty and if you're going to be participating in sport I just think it's nice it doesn't end up running into your eyes as much the tint to this is relatively deep for a tinted mineral sunscreen and it doesn't go on as sheer barely there you definitely can see this on the skin but it blends into at least my skin tone quite nicely and it's comfortable to wear it feels good going on the skin it has a lot of a silicone slip to it so i know a lot of you guys do not like that like many of you have commented you cannot stand the md solar science sunscreen because of that slippery feel you're not going to like this if that's the case like the Elta md product there's no niacinamide in this so if you were niacinamide averse then you know this would be an option for you this is one i tried a long time ago i wanted to repurchase skin as i like to call them skin skinceuticals it is their physical fusion uv defense sunscreen spf 50. this goes on like a dream it is a liquid a fluid formula very lightweight very comfortable not greasy not heavy this is water resistant 40 minutes and there's no niacinamide. So this checks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Really nice formula. And at 36 bu bucks for 1.7 ounces, it's kind of relatively competitive with some of the others that I've mentioned here. Stays on well, no pilling. It has a nice t tint to it. It's a little bit deeper than a lot of these more fluid formulas I've encountered. It doesn't have any odor to it, which I know some people find off-putting. It's a combination of both zinc and titanium dioxide. I like this. I, I would recommend this for sure. It, it's, a, it's a good product. Some people have commented in my videos that this is their holy grail, and I think they, they've done a really good job with this product. Definitely check it out. It is worth considering. Here's one that I recommend quite a bit. It is by Coats, their Flawless Complexion Tinted SPF 50 Vanishing Zinc Oxide Mineral Sunscreen. This you can get at Ulta. Coats, I want to say, is maybe the same umbrella company as Taizo, but a little bit more budget friendly. I think the coats stands for contains titanium and zinc oxide, although this product only has zinc oxide as the active ingredient, which is fine. SPF 50, this is not water resistant. Of everything that I'm mentioning here, this one is the shiniest. Tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate in it as well. This one is pretty inexpensive as far as these tinted sunscreens go. $27.50 for two and a half ounces. This does not have that buttery consistency like the Taizo one or the MD Solar Science ones that I love so much have. This one doesn't have that consistency. It is a lot more, it's somewhere in between a liquid and a cream. It's, it's pretty thin in consistency, easy to spread on the skin, which I appreciate. This has mica in it, which could be why it's shiny. That is one I've, I've recommended a lot over the years. I really like it. This is a repurchase for me. And, you know, I've just, I don't think I've ever actually shown it on this channel before. All right, this one I purchased and it's so it's new to me, but I've seen a lot of people talk about it. It's by Sunbomb. It's their tinted SPF 30 mineral sunscreen. You can get this at Target. $17.99 for 1.7 ounces, not too bad. Uh, zinc and titanium dioxide. This one's water resistant, 40 minutes, which I appreciate. And this has a really nice 
feel on the skin. It is a bit on the buttery side. It has rice bran extract in it. There's no niacinamide in this product. I've been actually pretty impressed with this. No fragrance. Again, I think I mentioned that at the beginning that all of these are fragrance free. Uh, this one is vegan and this brand is cruelty free. So this, yeah, I've been happy with this. Yeah, this one's nice. It's not shiny or greasy on the skin. Like it just goes on like a nice moisturizer and it doesn't pill. It's It's got good spread to it. There's no clumping. It's not tough or sticky or tacky or anything. I've rather enjoyed this. Speaking of Target, this I've already mentioned in another sunscreen video, but it definitely bears a repeat in this video. It's the Undefined Beauty R&R Sun Serum SPF 50 Water Resistant 40 Minutes. This has become a favorite of mine. It is a liquid formula. The tint is medium to pale. It's not as pale as like the Tatcha one. It spreads on the skin really nicely. It does have a bit of a slippery polymer consistency, but it doesn't have that buttery whipped consistency or anything. It's not greasy. And it would be a great product to apply, allow to dry, and then put makeup on over if you wanted to, like as a makeup base. Tremella fusiformis extract, that's from mushrooms, very hydrating ingredient, moisturizing. It also has raspberry seed oil in it, which is an emollient. And it's got rice bran extract, which has got moisturizing properties to it. This does have niacinamide in it, however. So if you have issues with niacinamide, this would be one to skip. But I really liked it. This brand is cruelty free. This product reminds me a lot of the Color Science Mineral Face Shield. It even smells like it. This one does have a little bit of a scent to it. It's fragrance free, but smells the same <laughs> as the Color Science Mineral Face Shield. I don't know. It's strange. It's not a bad odor. It's just a little strange. It does not last, however. It doesn't last. And it's not you know, sunscreen smell. I get that question a lot. None of these have, to me at least, a sunscreen smell to them. $28 for 1.7 ounces. So not inexpensive. I, love, I like the liquid formulas. They're just easy to spread on the skin. No clumping, no pilling. Yeah, right now my favorites are the SkinCeuticals SPF 50 and this R&R &R Undefined Sun Serum. These are the ones I keep going back to time and time again. I've been really impressed with the Sun Bomb one myself. Coats is a long-standing favorite. This is a repurchase for me. Love it, but it is shiny, just as a word of warning. Taizo, I don't think I would purchase this myself simply because while it's great, I don't find that it's offering anything other than some of my other even more affordable options. Like I, I would probably choose Coats over this. Honestly, for me personally, just because of cost, I think Coats is a little bit less expensive. But this is nice, so I don't have a problem with it. I definitely would not buy the Tatcha one. Uh, for the price, I just, I don't know. I didn't think this was worth it. I would much rather get the UV Restore. I think this is a better option. But that being said, UV Restore, while I like it, I think the dermatology sunscreens are a more affordable alternative to this. So consider those, especially if you're on a budget. But this would not be a bad option. All right, that's the rundown of all seven of the tinted mineral sunscreens. I love trying out sunscreens and review, reviewing them for you guys. I came across an article recently that uh, searches on TikTok for sunscreens are like really impressive, very high number of people, young people interested in sunscreen. That makes me really happy. I always like to rag on TikTok for being full of dangerous misinformation, but at least people on there are motivated to look into sunscreens. That's, that is encouraging and you know, makes me happy. And there's definitely a rise in interest of t for people seeking out tinted sunscreens, which I think is good because that consumer demand will put more motivation on the sunscreen brands to make more tinted formulas, hopefully come out with even more shades that are you know, more cosmetically acceptable to different skin tones. Always oh, hard to predict how some of these tinted formulas are gonna perform on a deeper skin tone, honestly, because sometimes they do quite well, even though coming out of the bottle, they don't look like your skin tone. Sometimes they do end up blending out quite well on a deeper skin tone, whereas others are still gonna leave that chalky white cast. If you want a guaranteed no cast sunscreen, it's gonna be a chemical sunscreen, and those are great options too. In the description box, I'm gonna put my most recent sunscreen review video where I go over a lot of great chemical sunscreens. So look there if you were looking for a good chemical sunscreen. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.